today take a quick look at um, Dragonfly BSD. I know very little about it except that it was uh, forked from FreeBSD uh, quite a bit of time ago and they focus on performance, uh, you know, simplicity. So different than say FreeBSD says, oh we want something complete and general purpose yet still high performance or NetBSD hey we'll run on everything and we have great code or OpenBSD uh, very secure and uh, well thought out so let's fire up uh, Dragonfly BSD see if we can do an install and uh, I'll comment on it as we go so based on FreeBSD so we'll call it Dragonfly BSD lack of a better thing so a couple things I do know about it is that it has the hammer file system which is supposedly very fast but needs a little bit more space to get going so we're gonna make a slightly bigger um, file system to begin with Let's call that 52 gigs And let's just tweak some settings here. Uh, make sure we have everything right. Uh, two CPUs. Storage. Yeah, it's got the host I.O. I'm going to create bridged because I don't want to have to do this all on the, the screen here because this is forwarded X windows. Uh, what else am I missing? Ah, let's put the, put the disk in the drive here. And let's fire it up. Uh, I'm going to switch to scale mode so that we can uh, see the uh, see the text here on the, the screen capture a little bit better, although it will look a little goofy again in scale mode. The aspect ratio is a little off. So we're booting here. Um, so far, like I said, not installed it before. Don't know much about it. Um, heard some some people talk that it was uh, really high performance so I'm not really going to get into performance in this video um, you know doing some uh, some benchmarks etc may take some some time login as installer okay that seems pretty easy yeah want to install okay AD0, yeah, that's me. Yeah, use the entire disk. Yes, I want to use Hammer. If I was going to use UFS, I would just use FreeBSD. Although I'd probably use ZFS on FreeBSD. I'm going to Giga Swap. Okay. So, yeah, so create the file system. Well, certainly took a minute to create the file system. Um, I'll do the install. The install CD was uh, only a, a couple hundred megabytes, if I recall correctly. Let's switch over there and see. Okay, so 605 meg. So an, an actual CD size. See there that 914, that's... Uh, Zenwalk, which we may take a look at uh, in, a, in a future video. That's one of the kind of lightweight um, Slackware clones. So about a third the size of a Slackware distro, but uh, prettied up a little bit for desktop users. So far, I'm, I'm liking the, the the Dragonfly installer, and you know it's got the it's got a little Dragonfly logo. The menus have been painless, um, you know, really basic. That partitioning view. Um, was really quite nice, uh, you know. Uh, certainly an, an improvement. And you know, installers vary. How many times do you actually install something, right? So, you know, I know OpenBSD has a little bit of a, you know, it's it's, it's a little bit more difficult to figure out, but you figure it out once. So, you don't need to do it all the time. Yeah. Okay. Boot blocks. Let's configure the system. Uh, yeah. Local time. Boise. Yeah, I'm not in Boise. I'll say Chicago. And you want a root password. Uh, yeah, add a user. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I, I'll take TC shell. This is a BSD, so let's say. Um, that was H. Let's put me in the wheel group. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, a good tip. I don't know how many of the BSDs still use that old habit of mine to say, ooh, let's be in the wheel group. Okay, um, I guess that's it. Uh, oh, let's configure the network. EM0. No, I want to configure it myself so I can SSH in later. 211. Yep. And, yeah. My routers. And, uh, Okay, cool. Uh, I guess that's it. I don't see a way to exit here. So, let's reboot. And uh, I'm going to switch out of uh, scale mode so that I can uh, take out the CD. I'm sure there's probably some some way to do this uh, without without that view. But I don't know if the pull out the pull out the CD. F1. Okay, so a couple stages of bootloader. Yeah, don't want to wait for your 10 seconds. And we'll see. Uh, very similar to the boot up process of FreeBSD. Makes sense as it was a, a port. I guess, I, I think around the, between the 4 and 5, they, they forked it. Um, so we'll see anything interesting in the the boot messages. Okay, it's got got that. Let's see. Hey, I can log in. Um, let's. Well, wait, my known host. I'm using an IP here. Permission denied. Public key. Huh. That's a little weird. Uh, let's go back into scale mode and see if we can uh, see what's going on here. Because that is certainly weird. Um... See if there's anything goofy here in the config. It's like a lot of defaults here. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. I was logging in as a different user authorized keys. Okay. Sorry, this is not making the most exciting of viewing. Okay, so they do not want passwords in clear text. Um, that's really annoying. I, that's my big complaint so far. Um, yeah, uh, you have a system, you're just bringing it online, you can't SSH in without without keys. Yeah, use, use password authentication. Uh, most people are going to be installing this on a protected LAN, they're going to be behind a firewall of some sort. No one's going to say, oh, let's just install and it comes up right away in the public network or in the DMZ. No, people are going to, they're not going to do it. They're going to set it up separately. You know, enable SSH, let people configure it uh, from more secure uh, setting after that. Frustrating. Okay. Let's see if that is better. Okay, I am in. Um, so, cool. Um, let's see what the, the partition layout looks like. So, 
yeah, not a problem. So we got boot, we got a root. Uh, it looks like it's created a, a file system hierarchy already for us. Um, any big processes running? I guess root has C shell. Yeah. Nothing so far. Um, let's see about installing uh, some packages. Uh, uh, say, what do we want? But my favorite uh, machine simulator. I think it they use uh, package source, which is is an interesting change because FreeBSD uses uh, ports. I mean, package source is, is similar. Um, you know, my my exposure to package source is limited to a couple of the Lumos distros. Um, so things like Open Indiana uses package source, um, and then also NetBSD. <laughs> Personally, I really kind of am on the fence with package source. It, it has some really great features. I mean, my favorite way to distribute packages is the Slackware Slack builds setup. I know it's not as complete, and it's you know it's more crowd built, but it uh, it 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 works for me. Um, you know, it doesn't have any of the dependency checking and and build stuff, and you can still build to, to suit your suit your needs. Okay, let's see. Did that actually install any files? Yeah. Okay. Is there a local bin? Uh, didn't update the the path there. Okay. So it gets simh. Um, let's see what other packages they have. Let's see Emacs. Oh, okay, lots of lots of Emacs stuff. Um, let's see about installing Emacs here. Let's see how long that takes and how much uh, much to expect. Okay, almost 800 megs for Emacs. That's a little a little excessive. I guess it's throwing all this stuff in there. GTK and yeah. All that stuff. Does this have X windows on it? Nope. Uh, no X by default. Um, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, maybe we'll see about about putting uh, uh, putting X on it. But this is supposed to be a really quick, uh, really quick look at this. So let me uh, let me fire up a new tab here. Yeah, no, nah, won't worry about that. Um, let's just break out of that. Uh, am I spelling? Okay, so uh, they said to go look at the man hierarchy, see what's going on. So, and compatibility layers. Okay. Um, not a lot to see. Let's. Uh, Postgres. Postgres. Okay, so packages for Postgres. How about Xorg? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the package system works really nicely, uh, similar to B FreeBSD's package system. Uh, so far, so good. Um, you know, for a server system, I think it will really all come down to benchmarks on this Hammer file system. How does it stack up against, you know, ZFS um, on the the BSD side, um, or against some of the advanced file systems on Linux, BTRFS, um, which I've heard some some good and bad things about. I mean, I'm a traditionalist. I, you know, I, I would still use UFS on all my BSDs if I could, and uh, use an extended, you know, extended three, extended four for my Linux roots, and then, uh, you know, one of the, the high performance computing vendors file system. So IBM's JFS 
or SGI's XFS for dealing with large uh, large bits of data. But uh, I guess that's it. Quick look. Um, getting a Dragonfly BSD uh, VM up and running. Uh, had some uh, great points. Easy installer. Quick to install. Small distro. Stump small distribution ISO. Bad points. Eh, you know, um, it doesn't come with a whole lot out of the box. Um, you know, OpenBSD, you get a full system with X. NetBSD, you get a full system with X. Um, let's just take a couple of, look at a couple other things. No CLang, but it does have GCC. Oh, wow, GCC5. And that's the most advanced GCC I've seen. So, okay, so it's got some, some, new, some new packages. Maybe that's how they get some of their, uh, their performance edge, is by using the really modern compilers. Um, but that wraps it up. I mean, it's good, easy to install, small, bad. Doesn't come with a whole lot out of the box. You know, battery's not really included. And the whole turning off password-based SSH logins right out of the box without telling you that in the installer, uh, that's a that's a big annoyance. But other than that, uh, I'm going to play around with it a little bit more, but uh, you've heard me uh, drone on long enough for this video. Um, and I'll check back with you next time.